Today, uh, I'm going to be talking to you guys about advanced networking with uh, Luigi and Host Plumber. Um, my name is Arjun Bandur, and I'm a software engineer at Platform 9, uh, working primarily on the Kubernetes uh, and the networking, uh, the networking stack. So you might be wondering, you know, advanced networking, what does that mean? As you know, normally with Kubernetes, you have one uh, cluster-wide network, um, you know, it, you generally have one CNI, uh, all the pods kind of connect to it. Might not fit all your networking use cases. Uh, for example, for uh, uh, virtual network functions, for uh, virtualization, um, you know, connecting to legacy, legacy uh, networking networks in your data center. Uh, so we're kind of here to help you with all of that. Uh, I'll be talking about two different uh, operators that we have developed. Uh, as I did earlier, they're called Luigi and Host Plumber. Um, so first, Luigi is basically a say, cluster add-ons operator um, for advanced networking plugins. You've probably seen different types of advanced uh, add-on operators uh, you know, under different projects, um, but we decided to develop our own because you know, they kind of didn't all fit our use cases and they, they were kind of missing certain plugins like SRIOB or uh, IPAM drivers, for example. Um, so we just decided to have our own one that's kind of focused on these advanced networking plugins uh, with the goal of deploying Multis, uh, which you will almost always need, along with all the other CNIs and plugins that you need to get set up. So for example, you know, obviously um, you probably heard about this project from uh, Multis, which is the first, uh, which is the first plugin that you'll need to support any multiple uh, networks in Kubernetes. Uh, if you want to go from one CNI to more than any, you will always need Multis. Um, Luigi also supports SRIOB uh, and the device plugins needed to support SRIOB. Um, it'll it supports uh, a particular IPAM plugin called Whereabouts, which will you know provide your pods with IP addresses in the absence of a DHCP server. Um, it'll install Open vSwitch as well as CNI for you. It'll install Node Feature Discovery for you, which can be a handy tool. Uh, and Host Plumber, which is the other operator that I just mentioned, you know, which will help you actually configure the nodes that you need to use all these plugins, right? It's You can't just install the plugins and then start using them. You probably have to prep the nodes and you know, you're wondering how to do that. So host plumber is our second operator that I'll be talking about later today. And this is used to actually configure the nodes for these advanced networking use cases. So for example, you know, creating the SRAV virtual functions, right? Even so you suppose you've installed Multis and you've installed uh, the SRAV CNN device plugin. Uh, you still need to, you know, go on each node, uh, load the virtual function drivers, create the virtual functions, verify that info. So host plumber is kind of here to help you do all of that. Um, it can also do various other things like create VLAN interfaces, configure OBS, so you can view the routing tables on all your nodes. Um, and this allows you to do it basically from a Kubernetes custom resource uh, operator you know, without having to go on each node and configure it. Um, just provides a Kubernetes kind of centric way of uh, configuring your nodes. So with that, I'm going to be running through a demo shortly. Hi guys, um, I am here to talk about uh, a new operator uh, called Luigi, uh, as well as a new operator called Host Plumber, and I'll explain what those are. Um, so Luigi is a new Kubernetes operator, and its goal is you know, to basically deploy and manage uh, advanced networking plugins and secondary CNIs. As you know, the default Kubernetes networking model uh, can be sometimes restrictive. You know, you usually have just one primary default CNI, a cluster-wide uh, IP pool and network. Um, this can be a little bit too restrictive for NFV or virtualization Kubert use cases. Um, and then, you know, secondly, there's a lot of these discrete plugins. You might have heard of Multis. You might have heard of SRIOV. You probably heard of Open vSwitch. Uh, you know, you're wondering how do I install all of these? How do I configure my hosts to be able to use them? Um, how do I get my IP addresses assigned on these other networks? You know, how do I install an IPAM plugin? Does DHCP work? 
Uh, so Luigi and Host Plumber uh, are basically here to kind of help you out in this regard and simplify the deployment process. Um, the first is that this uh, requires an already working KS cluster. So you know if you have a you need a working Kubernetes cluster, uh, it should work on any uh, kind of deployment. It's uh, infra it's agnostic to which vendor you have Kubernetes from, uh, but you just need some kind of uh, working data cluster with uh, core DNS and a primary CNI up. Uh, in my example cluster here, I have a, a Kubernetes cluster that's running uh, Calico. Um, and as you can see, it's fairly uh, simple. I don't have any deployments on, nothing else really, um, mainly just Calico right now. Uh, and that's it. So to deploy, uh, so first let me actually get into what uh, Luigi is um, and what, what plugins it supports. So the first is, uh, you know, Multis, you probably heard of it. This is always, always required. Uh, if you want to add multiple CNIs, uh, it also supports SRIOV, the device plugin, open vSwitch, it installs actual switch daemon itself along with like the CLI tools. Um, it also installs the OBS CNI plugin, um, it'll install a where uh, IPAM driver called Whereabouts, which you may have heard about. It also supports node feature uh, discovery. Uh, and the one that also we'll talk about later is called Host Pumble. Um, this is for now, it's located within the same repo in platform and Luigi slash Host Plumber. Uh, it's another operator, independent operator actually, uh, but it's mainly an operator that allows you to configure your nodes uh, networking prerequisites and also view your nodes networking state and this is mainly to get your nodes uh, set up and working with SRIOV, open vSwitch, uh, you know Mac VLAN where uh, all of these plugins right because you might need to um, load uh, certain uh, SRIOV drivers, configure the VSI interfaces, create VLAN interfaces, create OBS bridges, you know, view the routing uh, IP information of your nodes, uh, so forth. So, you know, unless you have your own automation and way to prep your nodes and bootstrap your nodes, you can use Host Pumper, which is a plugin that's deployed via Luigi. Uh, so, I, I'm not going to go too much into detail here, but you know, Luigi is basically like another cluster add-ons uh, operator, uh, but specialized for these use cases. And we will add more uh, plugins. Uh, as we see fit, this is just the initial uh, what's supported. So you know, for now, it'll take in like you can uh, choose whether what namespace to deploy a plugin in, uh, what the uh, image override is. So right now, Luigi will deploy a stable release version of each of um, these CNIs. Uh, suppose you're doing it in a dev test environment where you have a custom bug fix, or you're working on the actual CNIs. Um, you can also override the image as pulled. You can set the image pull policy. Uh, and then, you know, if you're hosting in a custom registry, rather than pulling from like say public Docker Hub or GCR, you can also specify a private registry base. Um, so let's get into the first example here of how to actually uh, deploy all these plugins. Here's a very comprehensive uh, example here. So with Luigi, there's one CRD and it's just called network plugins. And, uh, you know, so you can define the, uh, for now, the, uh, you can set that's for the private registry base. We're not using one right here. So we have, uh, the plugins that are supported, uh, and I'm here, I'm saying de deploy, you know, host bomber with the default options. I'm not setting any of these configurations here, deploying node feature discovery, deploying Multis, deploying SRIV and OBS with the default options. Whereabouts on the other hand, as you can see, uh, has some configuration overrides, uh, I'm not going to get into detail the specifics on these. These are all specific to the actual plugin. So if you're wondering what the IP reconciler is, for example, and whereabouts, you'll have to actually go to the whereabouts GitHub and uh, see what this uh, feature does. Otherwise, like I said, uh, it, it's best if you don't know what you're doing, you can leave all these blank like this and I'll de uh, Luigi will de deploy with what you know is a good set of defaults. This is just to show what some advanced uh, customizations may uh, look like. Uh, here's another one that you may want to actually do, uh, right? By default, it's going to deploy these in the default namespace. 
Here, I'm just overriding them and I'm saying deploy these in the cube system namespace. Um, you know, depends on what you want namespace you want to deploy. Um, similarly, Luigi will take care of upgrading these plugins for you. Um, each version of Luigi, when you upgrade Luigi, um, <clears throat> the Luigi operator, if it's managing any of these plugins like Multis or Whereabouts or SRIOB, it will then in turn upgrade uh, these plugins to a new release. So let's go to my cluster here where I have, like I said earlier, I have Calico. Uh, I've already deployed Luigi. Uh, and as you can see, it's just running right now, it's just a controller. Uh, it's a deployment of one replica. I deployed it and you can deploy it either way. Any anyway, from the sample I have here, just kubectl apply Luigi plugins operator in the samples folder at the uh, our repo here. So if you go to samples, um, this is the one you want. Uh, just get the raw version of this and kubectl apply it. So just as a quick glance, you can see it'll define a namespace for itself. This is the CRD for the plugins uh, resource that I just described. And this will show kind of what fields are actually supported if you wanna get technical. Um, and these other uh, are back resource to create for itself. Here's the main deployment spec, as I mentioned, or just a simple deployment of uh, one replica. So going into that, I've already deployed it, but I've already deployed it, uh, and yeah, so let me just get into deploying the plugins. So I have a, I have a sample a CRD here. I think it's the same one from the example on uh, GitHub. Um, I, for now, I'm deploying, actually going to deploy all these plugins right here. Actually, first, I'm not, I'm going to show you how to, Use it. I'm not going to deploy SRIOB because I need to create the uh, virtual functions first, and then I shall deploy SRIOB. So for now, let's comment uh, SRIOB out. And I'm also going to comment uh, OBS out just because I'm not going to demonstrate OBS in this uh, demo, but do know that if you do, if you want to deploy OBS, like I said earlier, this would deploy open vSwitch itself as well as a CNI. So we'll deploy both of those, uh, everything you need to basically use OBS. Um, for now, I, these should be fine. Uh, so I'm deploy all these. Uh, basically, I'm going to deploy whereabouts, multis, no feature discovery, and host pump. So save that. Oops. Okay, <clears throat> let's watch our deployments and make sure that all the plugins that we deployed uh, are coming up. So we can see, uh, oh, before we could, just to show, I have three nodes in my cluster. I have a master node and I have two workers where SRIV has been already been enabled in the BIOS. Um, so I have, three host plumber uh, running, one on each node. I have a Multis that's running on each node. I have a whereabouts that's running on each node. And we have also deployed the node feature discovery uh, deployment as well. So now that these are all running, uh, your next question might be, you know, how do I actually use it, right? We just have these plugins running. That's the first step before you can actually use them. So now we come to uh, host plumber, right? Uh, this kind of helps you actually configure and prep your nodes for all these use cases like OBS, Mac VLAN, uh, SRIOB. Um, it defines two new CRDs called host network template and host network. And these are basically, as you can guess, used to either configure host networking and view their uh, state. Uh, so here's just an overview, if you know, what all it can do. It can configure VFs, configure VLAN interfaces, configure OBS bridges and attach interfaces, uh, configure and view the uh, IP addresses and routing tables of your nodes, um, and more planned for the future, such as, you know, enabling to CTL configuration, um, bonding interfaces. Uh, the ultimate goal is, you know, this will kind of be a operator that's used to 
configure networking for any Kubernetes managed node. Um, how to use this? Um, here's a comprehensive example that kind of shows a lot of what it can do. So you just want to create a host network template object, uh, give it a name. Uh, you can use node selectors to select what nodes it will target. So in this case, you can see that I am applying a template and it's going to apply it to every node that has the SRIV label as true and the foo equals bar label is true. So where did this first label come from? Well, this came from automatically uh, node feature discovery. And that's why this plugin is included. Um, this plugin, if you automatically deploy it, it'll automatically discover um, node capabilities, you know, from SRIV to CPU flags uh, and append them as labels to every node. So for example, if we did uh, cube cuddle, Here's uh, one of my SRV capable nodes. You'll see, if we scroll all the way up to the top, um, we have a lot of labels here called feature.node um, that lists a lot of uh, flags here. The one that, and this is all automatically added, the ones that you know we are interested in are these SRV ones. Uh, and you know the reason for that is, is we're obviously configuring certain networking configuration, not all our nodes may support this topology. Uh, in my example, my master node is not <clears throat> SRV capable. So, you know, we don't want to config uh, configure anything and have an error out. Uh, by default, it will go and apply this configuration globally to every node in the cluster if you don't have any node selectors. So now let's look at actually what this is doing. Um, it's configuring, this does a lot of things, right? So the first is, is goes on the NIC ENO2, it'll create four virtual functions and configure them to use the I40 EVF uh, driver. This is the kernel SRIV driver. If you're using DPDK, for example, you would use the VFIO PCI driver. Then this is going on uh, the interface ENO2, is configuring jumbo frames for an MTU of 9,000, and it's creating three VLAN interfaces, 1,000, 1,001, 1,002. Um, this is needed because, you know, some CNIs don't support VLAN tagging of their own, uh, Mac VLAN, for example, being one example. Um, so this will kind of allow you to automatically go and create VLAN interfaces on everything. And then here we have an example OVS config, where we create a bridge named OVS BR01. And this is, again, possible because we deployed OVS using uh, Luigi. So this is actually going to create the bridge on each node for you. And it'll attach ENO2.1000, which we just created up here uh, as the NIC assigned to this bridge. So this is obviously a very comprehensive example. We're kind of combining everything into one. We're using node selectors. Uh, you can split this up in as many templates as you want. So you know, here's, I'm just going to skim through this, but you know, here's an example where we've split it up into just SRIV config and we have a different template for each particular NIC, right? We have a, uh, a template for configure eight VFs just on the F1 NIC here, another template on just F0 NIC here that'll create four VFs. This one uses the IXGB driver. This one will use the DPDK uh, driver. There are many ways to configure SRIOV. Uh, you don't have to use it by the name of the NIC. So for example, if you're OSs are different, your interface naming scheme, you can also assign them by vendor and device ID. So in this case, you know, it'll go and select every Intel NIC, because that's the vendor ID for Intel, and every NIC that matches this 1528 model number, uh, and go and create 32 virtual functions. And as you can see, again, we have no node selectors here. So this is, you know, going to create every node in your cluster and apply this config. You can also configure by PCI address, uh, where you know instead of naming NIC or the vendor ID, you know the PCI address of each NIC, and this is just another way uh, to do it. In my case, for example, you know this would be I think be you know one, this would be you know two, so I would be applying this to two separate NICs, creating thirty virtual functions. Um, <clears throat> you can play around with these, uh, which you know is, really depends on how you want to apply the config and 
what your naming scheme is across your nodes. Um, the interface config is allows a way to you know configure IP addresses on nodes as well as VLAN interfaces. Uh, for now, as I said earlier, we might add support for configuring bonding and other <clears throat> any other Ethernet level can an IP level configuration here. But for now, you know, IP address configuration only makes sense if you're using a target a particular node. Otherwise, you know, you will run IP conflicts if you apply this to the whole cluster. Uh, but you know, this is a way to configure, say, secondary IP addresses on nodes or set an uh, interface MQ. Um, the VLAN interface, as I mentioned, is one of the more useful features here. Uh, just as I mentioned, because some CNIs may not support VLAN tagging. So here I'm creating uh, actually four VLAN interfaces on two separate NICs. I've created three VLAN interfaces on ENO2, and I've created one on ENO1. And apply this, this will again apply to every node that's only SRIV capable. Uh, and then finally here we have a OVS config, as I mentioned earlier, you know, this is used to basically create a bridge and attach any interface on the node um, to that bridge. Um, so now I'm gonna talk about the, so now actually let's go and configure the nodes, right? So let's say I have, um, so as I mentioned, I have uh, two, ma two worker nodes here that are SRV capable. <clears throat> I'm not gonna be demoing OBS. So for now, let me, I'm just going to remove the OBS config. And let's see, I my know uh, the NICs where I had uh, SRIV enabled are ENO2. Uh, I'm going to create eight, eight virtual functions. I'm going to be using the kernel driver, I40 EBS. And let's just go and apply this template. So now the uh, host number operator is basically going to, you know, reconcile that CRD that we just applied. It's going to go and tell every daemon set uh, that I showed you on each that's running on each node here. Uh, the host number daemon set to actually go and uh, apply that config. So now if we look at our master node, remember, ma uh, there's nothing applied and right that's because we had uh, that node selector. Here that said only SRIV capable and this is not an SRIV enabled node so you know we don't see any VLAN interfaces and we don't see any um, SRIV virtual functions created here. Let's go to our other two nodes here, so if we do. Actually, you can see I had virtual functions here from a previous run, only four, but you notice that I configured eight virtual functions. So what we should see now is that it reconfigured the node to use eight virtual functions. Yep. So now we have eight virtual functions here, numbered zero through seven that are present under the ENO2 device. <clears throat> I have three VLAN interfaces on my node here, and I have on both these nodes that I applied to, uh, we can look at here for eight VFs uh, and eight VFs on ENO2. And to reiterate, that's because this is the template that I applied, you know, only um, SRIB capable nodes, eight VFs on ENO2, create three VLAN interfaces. Um, and as I'll show you, I'll be using the VLAN interfaces for my Mac VLAN network. And I'll be using the v eight VFs, obviously, for an SRIB based network. Great. So now how do I actually, you know, so now we've used Luigi to deploy all these plugins, the ho um, host number, uh, Multis, uh, whereabouts, the IP reconciler is actually part of whereabouts. Uh, we've deployed also node feature discovery to automatically label our nodes. Uh, so we have all kind of, the, and we've also gone and configured our nodes to actually be able to use uh, these features. So now how do I actually create a pod? Um, if you go to our GitHub, we have some uh, samples that might help you actually, you know, create the multis networks, uh, as well as create the uh, sample pods uh, to use these networks. 
Um, and the sample set I just deployed are in the top level samples folder. Um, this is again to deploy the Luigi operator itself. And then here are some examples to actually go and configure your network. Um, these would at least see, you know, change it to your host spec. Uh, but now let's navigate into our uh, first, let's do a Mac VLAN based network, right? So here we have a, a definition for uh, a network. So again, these are all, this is gonna be specific to the CNI that you're using or the IPAM that you're using. In my example, we're using whereabouts and using Mac VLAN. So I'm saying, you know, create a Mac VLAN network on this VLAN interface that I just created. Uh, and we're gonna be using whereabouts. And here's my uh, subnet definition. So it's just a simple slash 24 network uh, going out this interface. Um, so let's go and create this Mac VLAN network. So I've checked out the repo, obviously. So create the network. Um, it's not going to do anything yet in the pod. So, you know, nothing will deploy. This is just de deploying the actual Multis network. So now let's go and create, let's go create a stateful set just because that shows more of it. I'll show you what a pod spec would look like as well. Here's a pod. Um, as you know, this is uh, this is anything related to Luigi. This is standard uh, Multis annotation where you create a Multis network and then you just specify the annotation for the name of the network here. So my network was actually called um, whereabouts conf in this example here. And so my pod is just going to refer to that network as one network to attach it to. Uh, and this is just a simple Alpine pod, nothing fancy. So if you have a pod spec, you all you literally need to do is just add your annotation here to say what network or networks you want to attach it to. So let me go and YAML. Um, here's a stateful set example that I had that will create, you know, deploy, uh, a stateful set, which is, uh, consists of three replicas here. And this is nothing fancy. It's just a stateful set of three replicas, um, with some anti-affinity parameters here. Uh, and I was talking about the network annotation, as you can see, this is part of the pod spec. So you don't want to add it to the metadata for the deployment, replica set, daemon set, or stateful set, whatever you have, you want to add it under the spec for the, the pod itself. So it's one level lower. Uh, and this is you know identical to the pod spec that I had earlier, same network, just simple line that says an annotation that says what networks I want to attach it to. Um, so now we did. Uh, it's in the default namespace. So we have a sample pod running. Uh, it got assigned to one of our nodes. If we describe this pod, you cuddle. You see some logs here, you know, obviously Multis attached the uh, uh, two interfaces to it and the reason for that is, is uh, in with Multis, if you weren't aware, um, the primary CNI, uh, whichever one you're using, will always be present in your pods. Um, there's really no way around that. So it's kind of like a default interface that appears in every pod <laughs> that you have. Uh, and that'll kind of be like the ETH0. Um, whereas any secondary networks you attach uh, <clears throat> will be present as the remaining interfaces. So even though my pod only had one network annotation, it came up by default on my Calico network. This is my Calico uh, subnet. And it also came up on my Mac VLAN network. So it actually has two interfaces. So if we actually were to go into this pod, You can see it has two interfaces and actually got two IP addresses. So ETH0 is its Calico interface uh, and Net1 is 
the Mac VLAN interface on the Multis network. So got an IP of 32. Uh, and now let, let me show an example for SRAV. Um, so again, as I mentioned, we have uh, samples here. So we just navigate to the SRIV uh, folder here. Um, the first thing is, is you, this is, you need to create a config map, and this isn't a requirement from coming from Luigi or Host Plumber. This is just something that's required by the device plugin, and it basically tells the device plugin, you know, um, you, you we went and created eight virtual functions previously on our host, right? This tells the device plugin now what uh, resources and virtual functions to watch and then tell Kubernetes that are usable. So here, if we go to our example here, it's the same example. So you know, this is just saying, uh, create a resource name called Intel SRV kernel one uh, and watch ENO2 virtual functions zero to eight. Uh, any of them using the I-40 EVF driver. Um, you can obviously leave this blank and I'll watch all virtual functions on ENO2, but this kind of gives you a way to say, if you want to reserve the virtual functions for other purposes and only have Kubernetes manage some, you can do it. Um, if you want to know more, you can actually go to the device plugin GitHub and see the, the full list of configuration options and selectors that you can have. Uh, they get a lot more involved and complicated than this, but this is just a very simple example to show how to do it. Okay, so now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we we you know we created our SRAV config map. Um, we created the Multis network for our SRAV network, and as mentioned shown earlier, you know we used Host Plumber to actually create the virtual functions and assign the I forty EBF driver uh, to these nodes. Uh, but as you may remember, we didn't actually deploy the SRV plugin yet. Uh, we had to configure the virtual functions first, and that was only so the deployment device plugin could detect those upon startup. Um, let's go and enable the device plugin. And this kind of shows also how to um, use Luigi to enable or delete a plugin. So just un uncommented out, we're going to be deploying SRV with the default uh, parameters. Uh, and then just we will just reapply or replace uh, the network plugins a CRD. If we want to delete a plugin, say we've deployed a plugin that's managed by Luigi and you want to delete it or deploy it yourself, you have to uncomment the particular plugin. So if we want to, let's say you use Host Plumber to deploy it. And configure nodes and you don't need it anymore uh you could just comment that out and reapply the template so i'm going to keep ovs configured unconfigured because i'm not demoing ovs right now but we're doing that okay so now we've deployed uh re uh, reapplied the luigi network plugins uh, crd uh, with OVS shown. Here's the plugins now for reference. And if we see, great. So now we have both the CNI <clears throat> running uh, as well as the device plugin for SRIV running. Uh, the CNI is actually, you know, what's going to be creating, uh, doing the plumbing of assigning a virtual function to a container, returning the result to kubelet, and the device plugin is more to you know, monitor <clears throat> what virtual function resources are created and allocated and assigned to pods, and this will be used more for scheduling purposes. Uh, but the SRV section here will deploy both of these in tandem. So now we have that. Now we have all the missing pieces before we can deploy an actual SRV pod. So now we go here. Uh, we already did created these two resources first. Let's go and create the pod. As I mentioned earlier, we have two pod uh, definitions here. Um, one of them has 
basically it's similar to Mac VLAN. You have an annotation for which kernel net, uh, which SRV network you want. Here was an example where I have a static MAC address. And this is just to show the format for the how the network annotation, the format uh, when you want to add a static MAC. So let me create these four pods that I have here. Three is also using a static MAC and four, pod four does not use a static MAC. So let's create all of these. Okay, so now we've deployed these uh, four pods and we can see that they all deployed here. Uh, remember the sample pod one was my Mac VLAN pod that I showed earlier. Um, and these are the four SRV pods that I deployed. Um, you won't see the SRV or Mac VLAN network annotation in kubectl get pods output, for example. This is only gonna show the you know, Calico primary CNI configuration. This is kind of outside uh, all the Multis networks are kind of outside of Kubernetes. Uh, they're not really, the API servers aren't really aware of them besides, you know, the network annotation. Um, but if we inspect this pod again now, we'll see that similar to the Mac VLAN network, we've attached two interfaces to it and thanks to Multis. We have an ETH0 from Calico, and we have a net one from our SRIOV network. We'll see a similar annotation, uh, a network status applied to the pod, describing you know, in detail the PCI address, um, the MAC, IP network name. Uh, and similarly, if you, uh, you know, exec into the bash prompt of this pod, you'll see an ETH0 on the Calico network and um, net one from the SRV network. And you know everything should work. So now we have a, a pod that's using SRV and it's assigning the virtual function with this PCI address. Um, so finally, I just had one quick thing more to think to show. Um, I talked about the host network CRD. Uh, so up to this point, you know, we use Luigi and host Humber and the net host network template to basically configure our nodes with the plugins and everything required to deploy a pod. Uh, on these Multis networks. So now how do we actually want to view the networking say, right? We may want to verify some stuff. We don't, we're not able to SSH on each node to like inspect this detailed information. <clears throat> so how do we manage the networking state of each node? We have another uh, resource here called just host network, not host network template. And this is not really meant to be used by you, the user. Um, the host farmer daemon set is going to manage it. And so if we do kubectl get daemon, get host networks, you see we have one created for each node uh, in our cluster, and the name of the resource is going to be the node. So if we inspect the one for the master node, oops. <clears throat> So the master node, uh, there's not going to be a lot of information. As I mentioned, we don't have any workloads scheduled on it. Um, it we didn't create any VLAN interfaces. We didn't create SRIV on it because it's on enable. So you know you can see these are all the NICs uh, or all the interfaces on the host. SRIV enabled is false, uh, and this just lists all kind of information about it, like MAC, MTU, PCI address. Um, so I have four NICs actually on this, but SRIV has not been enabled. Uh, you can view the whole routing table of the system here, IPv4 and IPv6. Uh, uh, so this is just the equivalent of doing you know, IP route or IP-6 route on the node. Now let's view a node that we actually created workloads on and configured SRIV on. So if we go here, let's look at this one. Always forget to do OEML. 
Great. So this is actually one of our SRIV nodes where we created SRIV on. So you can see there's a lot, there's quite a bit more information here. Um, if you want to, you know, parse through it, you'll see, for example, SRIV enabled is true on this particular uh, device with at this PC address. And this is a PC address for ENO2 physical function here. Uh, so you can see the physical function driver, the name, PC address, and because we've enabled SRIV, you can see detailed virtual function information for all of them. So how many virtual functions are created? You can see the PCI and MAC addresses for each of these virtual functions, along with other you know, link layer information, um, <clears throat> such as these. Uh, VLAN zero, you know, just means it's untagged. It hasn't been assigned, but as you remember for our other SRAV network here, we had assigned it as VLAN 1000, right? So now you can see I, from just looking at this output, I know that it happened to assign virtual function number six uh, is one of the virtual functions that was assigned. because so we see that, you know, it has a VLAN tag in 1000 in this particular PCI address. Um, here's some more, the routing table is obviously a lot bigger now because we have more workloads on this. So there's a, uh, a Calico route uh, used by the Calico CNI for each of these uh, local workloads. Uh, so this is just a bit more verbose uh, right here. Um, yep. So I think that concludes uh, the demo here for how to use Luigi and Post Plumber. Um, if you want, I suggest you, you know, you can poke around at these repos, uh, deploy Luigi yourself, and then use that to deploy Host Plumber and all these other plugins, play around. Um, 